about and how certain things keep coming up, popping up, et cetera. Um, I think one of the things that we have to bear in mind, and I was very happy to see this in the stimulus bill, is that when people lose jobs, they're going to need retraining. Especially with this new technology, we're going to have to know how to be able to put it into practice, et cetera, and, and, and produce, if you will, so that we can have a job. Um, make sure that those education funds don't get slashed. Make sure that there's bilingual training. Make sure that there's, uh, or at least bilingual uh, access uh, for, for adults, uh, et cetera, uh, so that we can better integrate ourselves into the community and make better jobs, you know, make better money, I should say. Get those big jobs. Um, it's really important also that we really think about, from a policy perspective as, as individuals, as advocates, where we put those dollars so that we get the maximum bang for the buck. Um, Dr. Fenton was making some very, very apt points with regards to the bankers, and what happened to accountability, but anyway, um, it, um, it really oh, is one of those things that we have to ensure that there's that kind of accountability so that everybody, we have an equitable, some kind of level playing field for everybody to be able to participate so that not only are our communities doing well, our children are going to good schools, et cetera, our homes are safe, but also that we are having access to these better jobs, that we are ensuring that we're at the table. One of the things we haven't discussed, I, I don't, I think I missed a little bit at the beginning, but I don't think you mentioned anything about cap and trade, right? No, I didn't. Okay. Well, there's this whole new economy that nobody's quite sure what is going to happen yet with this, but they call it the cap and trade, and, and essentially you capture uh, the, the carbon emissions and they're going to buy and sell it. And, and I'm having visions of those guys on Wall Street just say, you know, salivating, thinking about how many billions and billions and billions of dollars are going to be at the table. Well, if indeed they go that route, and let's say they do this, uh, and they start selling, you know, corporate, uh, let's say utility companies, and, uh, and there's some private industry that does do this already voluntarily. Um, so they start selling this as if it were a stock or futures, if you will, then um, that economy, we better make sure that our communities that are exposed in the manner that they are have access to some resources from that big money market that's going to be created to improve the condition of the, uh, the well, I hopefully of, of those utility plants or get rid of them all together and start over. I don't know. I'm not an expert on utilities. It seems to me that sometimes it's less expensive to, to totally deconstruct and reconstruct as opposed to trying to you know, tinker. Um, and, and that especially has to do with the coal burning plants, which is the ones that um, have most in our communities. And you're looking at pockets like Texas, uh, New York, that whole northeast coast. Um, oh, I mentioned Houston. I hate, I've always been given for Texas. We, we actually, the state of Florida is actually joining the United yeah. States. Okay. So Florida is actually moving forward with the trade problem. Now, and, and this is a very technical question, and I'm not really sure how it all works, but my understanding is it's, it, it, it's kind of a challenge because if all the states don't do it, and they only have it in certain pockets, are they going to be able to, you know, got, there's all kinds what if there's runoff? <laughs> there's all kinds of, and the, good, the good news is that people may not be aware of this, is that in the early days we were concerned about acid rain and yeah. things like that with okay. NO2 and SO2. We actually implemented the same kind of program. And it, it works. Yeah. It does work. It, it just, there's no question. You've got to work out all the details, yeah. and the devil's always in the details. Yeah. But, but, but I think we will have this. It's just a question. And I think that it's, you know, personally, I think that we need to look creatively at how we can improve it so that we're not, um, this is why the census is important, and we should all be counted <laughs> so that we can ensure that those federal resources are able to come to the local. Uh, and, and I won't even get going on the voting. Um, so, so hopefully, um, there, there's also a piece here on the globalization. Um, I think um, we also, if we're going to address American manufacturing, we also have to address globalization through trade agreements that create strong middle classes in developing countries so that they can buy our green products. So they too can become part of this green uh, situation. Uh, or, and, and lower uh, climate change problems. I know one thing I had lived, I used to live in, I lived in several cities and they all happen to have really intense pollution challenges, one being Santiago, Chile, and the other being Mexico City. And at the worst of the times when I was in Mexico City, when I would wake up and have the illusion that I might go running and the sky was 
that color yellow. And I remember one day, I was like, okay, this is not good. <laughs> and I'm standing in my mom's garden and I'm looking up and there's this little bird flying by and he just fell. So I'm thinking, well, this poor little bird is having issues. And that's what this is doing to me. And, um, and, and uh, it has to do with these mountains and production areas. We have the same similar situation in Los Angeles. Uh, but these are the types of things that we have to think about. Um, the only thing I would add on the issue of trade agreements is um, with regards to North America. They're looking at this deepening North American integration using NAFTA as the format. And the only thing that I would say to think about with regards to this is they're actually talking about creating a utilities sort of all three countries kind of I'm not quite sure, infrastructure, I guess we can call it. And I'm not sure who would run it, how it would get run, who would get the money, who would be pocketing those 14%, uh, and, and whether it, you know, it's going to be very challenging. And they're not talking to us about it as a civil society, so we're not having an opportunity to put in our two bits as to what should happen. It's very complex, a lot to think about, but I, I strongly encourage all of you to, um, you know, get your members of Congress to get engaged. Not everybody's on the same page, um, you know. Uh, I, I, you know, and even within the Democrats, you know, do not assume all Democrats are environmentalists. It's not necessarily the case. And do not assume that all Republicans are anti-environmentalists. That's not necessarily the case either. Um, but do approach them from a very pragmatic manner, so that they will engage in this and look at this as part of the solution. One to stimulate the economy, but also to really address this very challenging situation that is climate change and what it means to all of our communities and our individual states. And I think I'll wrap up with that and those are my references. Thank you.